Cardiff is arguably the most haunted city in Wales. With more than a thousand historic listed buildings, the capital city of Wales is steeped in legends. One building still standing is Cardiff Castle that has a history that spans back to 55 AD when the first Roman occupation of South Wales began and the fort was built on this site to serve as a naval base until the early 5th century, protecting the empire. The Normans erected a castle with a moat, which stood at 40 feet high, surrounded by a moat. It was then to go on and live through generations of honorable families and has seen many lives and deaths. Many noble families lived here, such as the De Clares, the Tudors, and the Butes. Today, it stands as a site of international significance, and legend has it that many of its previous occupants still roamed the opulent rooms and castle grounds. Cardiff Castle itself is an incredible example of neo-Gothic architecture, thanks to the third Marquess of Butte who rumored to be the wealthiest man in the world, transformed the castle with architect William Burgess over the course of 16 years using the finest Wales craftsmen. Lavish Gothic towers, murals, stained glass and marble and elaborate wood carvings were installed. This castle became part of the great Gothic revival of the Victorian era. Is it any wonder that the ghosts of these walls don't want to leave their magnificent home? Safe to haunt the gateway to Cardiff Castle, this spectral vision has been seen manifesting by many people. In a newspaper article in 1956, a man named David Brecken said, Passing the walls of Cardiff Castle on a frosty night, I heard a faint jingle of harness, the clatter of horses' hoofs, the sound of bells, and an Irish coachman's cry from the direction <laughs> A second later, a coach and four partners had a steady track, then left hand the speed cut his way third and all the strength from the Mr. Brecon discovered that in November 1886, a man named Boyle had a similar experience. As he sat in the castle library one day, he heard a coach and horse arrive, only to be informed by the butler that no coach had come. The sighting has been said to herald an impending death, as some that see it have experienced a family bereavement shortly afterward.
The second Marquess of Butte was John Crichton Stuart, a wealthy aristocrat who developed coal and iron industries across Wales and built Cardiff docks. His family owned Cardiff Castle for over six generations, and he died in 1848, suddenly after a banquet while in his dressing room, which was a small chamber behind the library. His bust stands on the spot where he died, which helped the custodian that saw his ghost recognize him instantly. He is said to appear wearing a red coat and to walk through the fireplace and to the six foot thick wall. It is unclear how many female ghosts have been seen at Cardiff Castle. Indeed, there are more than one. A mysterious woman who remains an unknown figure is seen silently gliding past the castle in a long grey dress and on the bridge over the river pub where she stops and waves for signals in the direction of the castle. Her face is looking at one of the towers. She has been seen in daylight, but more often she is seen at dusk. Another ghostly female figure has been seen said to haunt storerooms, rearranging objects, and another faceless woman in a flowing grey skirt is spotted around Cardiff Castle building. A familiar name that visiting psychics have picked up is that of Sarah. The second wife of the second Marquis of Butte's wife, Lady Sophia, is also remote to haunt the grounds. She was said to be an obsessive and difficult woman to please and did not get on well with her husband's family. He was buried with his first wife Maria after his death. The clock tower is also reported to be haunted. One witness commented on a recent newspaper article that when it was a music college, it was also well known to be the home of a female ghost. The custodian of Cardiff Castle, a Mr. Edwards, took up the post of custodian in the footsteps of his father-in-law, Mr. Edgar Dunn, who looked after the interest of Cardiff Castle for more than 40 years. It was claimed that several odd things happened to both him and his family since he came to live there. One night, about 12 o'clock, I went upstairs with a friend to show him the banqueting hall. Yes. 
Our wives were downstairs when suddenly we heard footsteps in the back. We thought they were playing a practical joke on us, so we teased them to let the sweets off the lights. When nothing happened and the footsteps ceased, we went back downstairs. Both my wife and my friend's wife swore they had not left the sitting room. We searched the upstairs apartments but found no one. Sometimes the family at Cardiff Castle experienced what they called bad nights. Nights when I born, Mr. Edward's wife his four children or himself cannot get to sleep. Mr. Edwards says they all experience an eerie feeling that is difficult to describe, but it feels as though a wet blanket was cloaking them. Several times he has refused to go into the library, says Mr. Edwards. He starts shaking at the room entrance with his back up and his fur stands on end. He looks completely terrified. Asked whether he had ever seen a ghost, Mr. Edwards replied, I have never seen what could be described as a ghost, but I have seen shadowy forms. One night, my wife and I were in the guest room. I wasn't asleep and suddenly noticed a form by the bed. I thought it was one of the children who had perhaps come to us because they were feeling unwell. I looked up and saw a great form. It had no clear features and before my eyes it seemed to dissolve slowly into the air. person named Midlands Jack visited the castle in 2016 and then wrote a post in a forum in which he said, I was there about 23 or 24 years ago and had done a tour and found a part of the castle with all military uniforms and equipment displayed. While in conversation with a member of staff and a friend of mine, I noticed someone to the far left of me. On glancing to my side, I saw who I can only describe as a member of staff dressed in an army uniform, standing there all up with a great big smile on his face. I said to my friend, look at this guy, and on turning again, he was no longer there and the staff member we were talking to said that no members of staff dressed up and she hadn't seen him. Amongst other ghosts, said to haunt the Cardiff Castle, <laughs> Wales has its own folklore stories of giant humans in many regions, and it is possible that this is one story that was circulated to terrify any would be trespassers.
In 2016, Desperate Housewives star Eva Longoria visited the Cardiff Castle and talking of the stories of the second Marquess of Beach Coast, she said the following during a Snapchat video to her followers. So, we have just been told that sometimes a guy from the castle comes back as a ghost and sits in this dining room. I'm freaking out that the place is haunted and that he comes back for dinner every night.